Vecsei Márton írás. A Márton Vecsei. Uh, in the mornings, when I woke up in the ninth district, I woke up and I never felt uh, it was a bother to travel to Shoimar. I wasn't actually going to work to Shoimar, so I had coffee in Hüvösvölgy while I was waiting for the bus, and later I had to climb the stairs uh, to the hill, but two things actually... Uh, uh, compensated for this climb one was the beautiful scenery of the uh, mount uh, the hill side and the other was uh, Jenny uh, Honkish's dog so LMA's dog right from the very first day uh, treated me as a friend he never barked at me initially I was a bit awkward, it was a bit awkward to go into the home of this uh, couple but Lily Zetenyi treated me as a friend and even uh, after the last trip I felt uh, really honored to be able to work in their home and to sit there in Elemir's home week on week I want to actually say that his works and his orb is unquestionable because the sentences that I saw handwritten sentences who, which were crossed out later sometimes uh, how can they be unquestionable basically he kept asking questions all the time how can that be unquestionable his comments his uh, manuscripts keep asking questions from me from the world but just going back to the role of the home and why I felt so honoured. Elamir, this is how he wrote it. My house is my universe. To see the world from my house but the world unable to see me almost uh, gives me a position of a god and power and that's what I actually was given uh, access to. So I had an indefinite contract uh, to go there and see the comments, see the manuscripts, uh, um, side uh, remarks on the sheets of paper, published and unpublished ideas and concepts. All his vision and his uh, thoughts were the dioptric, which I looked at my own eyes, but so far did not see clearly enough. I learned a lot from him, things that I keep for life and keep things that are indefinite. Sometimes I had uh, cigarette breaks and Jenny accompanied me to the yard, to the uh, garden, all the way down to the bottom of the garden. He was not really uh, clear of his weight and size, just like Elemir was not uh, clear or uh, on uh, the importance of his own thoughts and ideas. And every new volume was a new adventure for me. It was a human adventure. First, I undid the string that tied together the sheets of paper and then I untied the thoughts, comments on, on these papers. So I sorted the personal letters, the used old uh, plane tickets and the English and Hungarian manuscripts. Uh, then I found a sealed envelope with one word written on it, which I expected to be letters, that was the Hungarian word, which also means, uh, also have another meaning, not letters, which I expected to see in the envelope, but they were leaves, six pressed dried leaves from a tree. Unfortunately, I never met Elemir personally, but I, when I think of him, when I see his manuscripts, when I see his straw hat, which I saw down in the cellar, when I uh, see all his comments, I just feel the joyfulness and the awe of a playful child. I think we should also do this pretend play more often, and just to pretend that we are free that we are actually conscious citizens, that we pre trust each other, that we are able to help those in need, that we are able to create a new world, a build new world, that we are actually mortals, but we live forever, that life a game, but it is not a game at the same time. I'm very grateful for the uh, IASK to 
ask me to uh, work through these uh, uh, manuscripts and also to Lily and also to Elamir that left an insight for me to into his work and just to look at the logo of the institute and you can only cross nine points with four uh, straight lines without lifting the pen of the paper by pretending that uh, there are no boundaries this was uh, written by Martin Vecce I'm also very grateful for the Institute to have the two days here to organize because I just feel just like others probably feeling that Elamir Hankish is still alive, still with us because um, listening in the mornings, uh, uh, the presentations, I kind of feel that I'm only repeating my, uh, what was already been said before, it's just like a shadow following the light. And basically, Elemir Hankish in his pain, in his suffering, uh, I think he was one of the richest. But I don't want to speak about that, actually. I just want to repeat what we heard from Mr. Mayer, that his intellect uh, was always characterized by uh, search, for searching, for, for looking for something. Uh, the, the, uh, the wondering, and it's true, basically, uh, what he said here, uh, that it was the jungle was, create, uh, was opening up the alternatives of life, the jungle of life and the jungle of thousands of possibilities, but about which he said that I don't want to reach the predictable sandy, watery plain too soon where there's no hope. And I think even after his death, it's still true that he was able to give us hope. The hope lives on in among us, in us, and we can hopefully pass it on to our children. I'm convinced that uh, we uh, can't uh, tear him apart from being or uh, distinguish him from being a literary uh, scientist and. I, I think the literary scholar, he always wanted to make others also understood uh, literature or understand literature. And one of the uh, materials that I handed out, actually, this is Eliot's uh, uh, Marina, the poem, uh, because literature for him was always a puzzle that needed to be solved. But we are uh, the readers are solving this uh, puzzle. So he created a communication, uh, a bridge of communication between the creator, the scholar, and the reader. And that's a structuralist, uh, which actually uh, he didn't make himself too popular be among the peers. So he was a master of uh, stratification. Mm, I also used uh, that. For example, when uh, I uh, did the analysis of one of uh, Dostoevsky's, Dostoevsky's uh, uh, short stories, and my professor was uh, uh, surprised how I could do that to open up 50 odd layers within the story. And actually, you use one layer to interpret and understand the, the next layer, and that's how you actually to climb this pyramid of hermeneutics. And also, when you have the result, then you go back. And uh, that was another method that he used to, to uh, use the thread to reach back uh, lower down. And he used that also to understand social and anthropological uh, issues and problems. He was a master. So basically, the unity of uh, what's been said and not said, and how uh, else to understand it than uh, to see uh, it manifested in life. And here is what I was talking about, Marina, that I uh, handed out. And if you have uh, some spare minutes, just try to understand it, try to uh, solve the puzzle, because there's plenty of puzzle there. 
and it's almost like an encrypted message that you can find in this poem. And basically, his starting point was the the void or the uh, uh, nothingness of Heidegger, and uh, we assume that it exists. And the oscillation between being and not being, basically, what is the essence and our essence as well, who, us who want to understand these works and also understand um, the author's uh, And later life, in, uh, he created or uh, depicted this uh, jungle-like uh, world, uh, obscure world that uh, was facing us. So the complexity and the uncertainty and the uh, obscurity is uh, what uh, you can see, especially here. This is a, a beautiful uh, quote. A strange uh, uh, rhythm and uh, uh, waves which comes from nothing, then it becomes clearer, but then again goes back to the uncertainty or on uh, on uh, uh, clear. And uh, this is the strange rhythm of uh, appearance and disappearance. This is the dynamism of the poem on every level and uh, every moment. This is the flickering, it's almost like a flickering of the uh, sparkles that for a moment you see and then it disappears and then a new sparkle comes to light again. And now let's talk about him uh, as the social uh, scientist. Uh, I think as a social uh, uh, scientist he was so uh, anxiously, vividly looking for uh, life, even through literature, even if he wanted or not, he this pushed him towards social s uh, studies and sciences. Uh, another lecture, actually, I uh, talked about his greatness as a sociologist, and that uh, the way I put it there is that his attitude, and also Attila uh, uh, spoke similar words. I would even position him, uh, uh, say, uh, his source, uh, or say, uh, uh, not even Ötvös. He could be an anchor point which helps us to understand Hankish. And everything that Attila was talking about uh, later on, uh, because I lived in the duality. Here, like, I uh, talk about it as the hawk mating of the is and the ought. So, the these two basically are sometimes they stifling uh, or getting a strong grip uh, on each other because this is a mating. This is the environment in which we have to find the meaning of life and also solve the puzzle when it comes to the uh, phenomenon of life. And he used the same methods for understanding uh, literature. I think the dualities that uh, we heard about before and all the, the duality that I think we always characterize with is basically the uh, grip uh, of East and West, whatever both mean. And obviously, in you are at, in the East, you still you have West too and vice versa, but the, the, the strong grip of these two actually uh, characterizes and, and, and shows the uh, duality of the ease and the old. And also we talked about the values and the uh, research, uh, and I think uh, he would be there as a sociologist of values also together with some other peers. And the key words that I put here uh, uh, as a social uh, scholar, that they characterize uh, him, uh, one being, for example, the uh, Hungarian individualism, which again, an old topic, is just like the ease and the odds. 
So it's neither competing nor cooperating. This is the happiness when you feel when the other person is doing badly. And that's the negative individualism. This is a curse or a trap, uh, maybe that's a better word for it, which uh, I think we, together with Ursh, are trying to find the answer for. And also the series of social traps. And uh, he derived it from the game theory, for example, the trap of missing heroes, the trap of missing uh, communities, the trap of uh, missing or the lack of trust. Negativism, Janusz Kornai, uh, I think, uh, was famous for it, and he had a very uh, important work um, uh, which influenced Elemir uh, when he came up with the inventory of uh, uh, this, uh, the, 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 uh, the deficiencies and the dual uh, society. Ferry, uh, in uh, his introductory speech, uh, talked about it, and I also think it's very important that the oscillation between uh, the is and the ought or possible, that was also put into practice. So he also thought that if there's something that can be changed, it should be changed. So when he launched a new reform era, he really was serious about it, and this is a heritage that I think we have to continue which uh, his uh, concept idea was let's uh, invent Hungary and uh, let's invent Central Europe, which is a primary source of his ideas. What I can add to that, uh, as sociologist, Hunkish, I think, uh, recognize the strength in us. These days we refer to that as crowdsourcing, uh, that the determination of the community or the determination of many is more, the synergy of this is more than just the determination of the, the, the individual. And that was missing from Europe and Central Europe uh, for a long time. Dialogue, that's another important uh, uh, word. And he also asked questions, but when you replied, you could also check what you were saying by looking into his eyes. So he he always persuaded or forced you to carry out dialogues. And that uh, still continues, even after his death. And another important thing which I... Uh, so he said that uh, there's no democracy without Democrats. So we... We, we have to, the, the same goes for capitalism, there's no capitalism without capitalists. So in this sense, I think this is our role and this is our task to educate each other and also our children to become Democrats. And his last era in his, uh, in his work, which is, I think uh, was also already reached into the 21st century, and that was the Hanki the philosopher who basically looked into the chaotic uh, state of the world and was looking for the order within the chaos. Ivan Vitani's uh, message was very beautiful uh, about this. And also, the whole era that we are living in actually is the age of uncertainty. It was one of the titles of his books. Uh, maybe retrospectively we can uh, look for chaos and order in that but again there's a duality uh, here the, in this duality we have to find ourselves and also each other and the incompleteness man is man because he or she is incomplete evolution is never concluded never complete and uh, the risk that even here, one of his last uh, last uh, uh, Christmas speech he gave, or lecture he uh, uh, talked about, was when he said, what happens when we uh, lose our sense or mind, then it's just the darkness uh, that uh, we need to exist in and find the uh, stars that guide us. And the last uh, writing, which uh, is only in manuscript, that we'll be talking about tomorrow. Basically, he was uh, uh, 
raising the um, interesting uh, idea of using quantum mechanics to social uh, uh, patterns. Previously, others also uh, tried to, to do that, and uh, others also looked at the uh, into this. Uh, endless uh, cosmic uh, indefinite uh, space and they see, saw themselves so basically the quantum universe which is deaf and blind to man uh, he said that uh, if you don't see that that, that uh, it doesn't exist also in his last uh, paper he very explicitly uh, talked about the loss of causality and basically what the world tells us it becomes audible and visible through God's glance and this these are the questions that he uh, uh, left uh, for us to answer this is my uh, Final slide, these are actually uh, uh, God-related questions, but very uh, uncomfortable questions. So, where is God? What boundaries, uh, in what boundaries does he exist in? And how did he create the world from uh, just nothing, from an ancient sea? What are those uh, mysterious waters upon the face of which the Spirit of God moved? Did he create himself? If yes, why? Why is this being better or more important than the previous uh, being, which was basically non or existent, which was non-existent? And the same questions were raised by him on uh, Elias Marina. Here, we don't know who the creator is. I'm very uh, inclined to think that we are the creator and we are uh, the addressees of these questions. So we have God inside us. Thank you. Um, now you will be able to listen to the music, which was a kind of commentary put in between Honkish's texts. He was reciting po poets as well. And you know that every speech, every kind of um, um, written and spoken text has a kind of melody. And I could actually put down this as a kind of music on paper. I made a score out of his speech. If we could get rid of some of the lights, if some of the lights were switched off, I would really appreciate it. Histories, jokes, memories, ideas. which are trying to be constructed into a unity, some kind of ideas which are linked and related and which grow into concepts. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, but only an unfinished person can be free. I'm lost, I'm playing. He left and he died. He never knew that he was Rambo. Did you know who you are and who will be in the collective human memory? It would be nice to learn. Comb your hair. Don't speak too fast. Walk straight. It sleeps time on the horizon and only your huge eyes watch you endlessly. I'm going to say that 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 I'
I don't really like determinism. Uh, looking for the new is something that all characterizes all of us. I'm dreaming of things which have never been, and I ask the question, why not? If you see, if you are still not bored. I'll give you a few more words and I promise I'll finish. How is it possible that we understand something which is a thousand times, million times bigger and more puzzling than we are? If you're still around, I'm not sure. And I will finish just. I will, you will give me a moment and we can go on. I have a question. I don't know if we have the time, but uh, did ever, did Jesus and Moses ever laugh? Why didn't they laugh? Did we learn in the past six or eight months how to do our job properly? Do we do we play on, on our instruments somewhat more proficiently than before? It's easy to play on any instrument. All you need to do is push a key at the right time. The rest is well, it depends on the instrument. How are you, my darling? My darling, what do you like in my speech? I love the word Persia. I didn't know how to type properly, and I typed Nietzsche, and I, I and I misspelled it. How uncertain a person can be in this universe. You try to cope with this harmony and disharmony and sort of embrace yourself in this kind of music in this universe and you sometimes manage and sometimes you don't.
I would like to ask a few questions. Do we know where we are and where we are going? Have we done what we were supposed to do, what we could do? Did we have the courage to invent something really special, something new? And the last question, you don't have to be bored for a long time. I believe that in your future, do, do you believe that in, in, in your future, in, in the rest of your life, can, can you invent something really big, something fantastic? I would, yeah, I would try to listen to some music now. Piece of dust is crawling on dew. I am covering my trousers with holes on it. So this is a poem impossible to translate. Thank you and goodbye. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you. I'm very happy to have the invitation. And on behalf of the publishing house and myself, two years ago I was here uh, attending a similar event. And I hope I will return. Uh, Jean Sass, the manager of the publishing house, asked me to interpret his well wishing and his greetings to the participants. I'm going to start from a little bit further away, but I'm sure that I will come to Elamir Hankish uh, in a very brief period of time. Uh, this certain point in the distance is the cafeteria at the humanities uh, faculty uh, at Alta, and we were lucky to be in a position to live in an environment where it was the most natural thing of the word to discuss things in the cafeteria, like what did you read last week? Did you read in the Moscow Villa, which was a literary journal? Or have, have you seen Elamir Hankish's new book? Of course I have I've seen it. I bought it for 21 forints. This was a, it was a series. And even a university student could buy books like that. So this was a scene for conversations like this. And a few days later, you, we, could have, we could have discussions like that about the book. Now, this is how I come back to our publications. And this is the last volume of, uh, in the series of his works. We uh, believe that it has a very nice cover, matching the greatness of the author. The sad thing about this that the price is not nowhere near 21 foreigns, obviously. But as the series of his author is concerned, it has the advantage, as opposed to the previously edited ones, that they have been re-edited, uh, re-corrected, 
when we started, well, he had his word in it and he helped and he gave his assistance. But since his death, we have been doing our utmost to correct the mistakes. And now they are near perfect bar. Of course, we know that there is no such a thing as a perfect book. The other thing that I need to mention is that in this series of his works, which has been uh, continually going on for the past four years, we our original plans were to publish two books per year, and we more or less could keep to our expectations. We are now publishing the seventh volume, and we are going to follow the same pace. Next year, we are going to launch a new project. Uh, we actually launched the project this year, but the pro product will be uh, ready next year. Uh, it's going to be a memorial book in which uh, friends, colleagues, associates, uh, acquaintances, and family members will uh, uh, publish um, studies and remembrances, uh, letters, all kinds of things. And the book will be published on the 90th anniversary of his birth. And this volume, which is on the way now, will have Hungarian and international authors. And we do hope that this will take us to a new level. And I'm talking in terms of marketing. Uh, perhaps in um, commercializing his works, obviously, I hope you understand the word in the right meaning. We don't want to make a lot of money, but to to well to promote his books uh, in a wider circle. This is what I mean to uh, forward his work uh, works to a larger number of people. Uh, the book market is expanding continually, but it still hasn't reached the level which we had before the crisis uh, broke out in 2007. So we still haven't reached that level we had 10 years ago. So when we talk about published numbers, uh, or where we, uh, when we compare the, the books, the number of books we published in the 1980s, well, we are nowhere near still. But considering the current circumstances, I think the Hunky series can be viewed as a large success story. Obviously, we are nowhere near as successful as if we were publishing Moonlight in Honolulu kind of romantic stories. But we would like to keep his works, his books on the market. Uh, perpetually and to make it available to the next and first coming generations. Uh, to achieve this end, and still experiencing some kind of limitations and restrictions, unfortunately, there have been some second editions, and we will, if a book uh, uh, gets bought by the people, we will reprint every time there is need on the market. I think it's a fantastic uh, wealth and resource uh, of treasures, basically, because he published books in all kinds of disciplines, in all area, in all kinds of areas. So, no, no matter which book we decide to publish, there will certainly be a, a large group of people who will be interested in it. So one of the primary tasks that we have is to provide this opportunity for the readers to get hold of at least some uh, kind of a book written by Elamir Hankish. Just one more idea uh, concerning the reception of the latest book we published. In uh, Life and Literature, which is a, a literary critique um, journal appearing weekly in Hungary, uh, we could read a few ideas by famous critics and famous literary persons. Well, we could see that Hungary is experiencing the same problems as it did uh, 100 years ago. And how surprising it is that some clever people uh, uh, put it 100 years ago. Uh, how, how clearly they described uh, 
processes and, and phenomena that we are now reliving and re-experiencing. And when I read an article or a, a, a chapter from Elamir Hankish, I'm always struck by the feeling that his vision is, was so clear, as if, as if it was happening yesterday. So he's describing something that we are experiencing now. It's a fantastic feeling. Now, the first printing or edition of Diagnosis, which is a book, but let's just listen to what he had to say back then. When we distribute assets in this society, we have laws and regulations. But those who are in the key figures, so the key figures in the system sometimes, they believe that these assets their own. Maybe they are they act like powerful landlords, like godfathers, and as a result of which, as an exchange for this, they want a kind of um, peasant uh, humili- humiliation from the others. Another quotation from the blurb back uh, cover of another book which is a nice illustration of uh, what I just had to mention. And it very clearly demonstrates the way he was thinking. Now, he said in an interview that with one mortar or cannon, you can actually destroy the whole society. But sometimes a nice idea can act as a whole army. I think this was a kind of approach that he followed during his whole life. He wanted to improve things. He wanted to uh, introduce new things. What he meant by reinventing Central Europe is reinventing its future and improve a situation so that we could have a better future from, from those lines. My last comment. Um, also, going back to the series, in the near future, the publishing house Helicon is going to come out with a new volume in which Elamir Hankish, uh, besides other authors, are going to appear in a volume. It, it was easy to get a contract with uh, Mr. Hankish, but now he uh, he, he has some articles or books where he actually co-authored with other people, and it's a bit more complicated how we can uh, uh, negotiate the rights of those things. But I, I'm sure that uh, we are going to publish those things as well. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.